Hi, I'm Dirk the Pyrographer with Shoemaker Pyro Shop. Today I'll talk about choosing photos for burning and not getting sued. When you're choosing photos, the first thing to think about is the resolution. The higher the resolution, the better. High-res photos will allow you to go as big as possible and see all the detail that's there to be had. Holy sh! I have this picture that I'm going to be using for an upcoming burn. It is high resolution and I can zoom in as much as possible. I could go as large as I want as well. I could probably go up to three feet long for this one. When you get low resolution photos like thumbnails, they get blurry as you get larger. Always try to go with the highest resolution that you can. One thing you have to take into account is burning is monochromatic we're using blacks and shades of brown. Not every photo will work well. One method I like to use is to turn it to black and white to see if it works. If we look at the bore photo, if we change this to black and white, we can see that it still retains its definition and its contrast. It's going to make a good subject for a burning. This parrot, while beautiful, when you turn it to black and white, it loses all of its contrast. Those colors just turn into grays. That doesn't mean that you can't add color. I occasionally collaborate with my wife on pieces. I'll do the burning, and if there's a focus piece that would look good with color, I have her color it over. This is the first piece we did like this, we called Donnie Rolls. I wanted to keep the portrait part all burning, then she added in the bowling ball with color. Trying to do this piece without color in the bowling ball would have looked very different. Another concern is a lack of contrast. If you're working with a portrait that is beautifully lit and looks wonderful, it might not be best for burning. I found that pictures with high contrast and lots of shadow works best for my burning. The more balance between shadows and light and shading in between, the more realistic it'll look. That being said, don't be afraid to use black. Some people don't like to use a lot of black because they think it makes the piece look heavy. I look at it a different way. If I establish my lights and my darks, everything in the middle is gonna balance better. Now that we've talked about what to look for in a photo, let's talk about what not to look for, and that's getting your ass suit off. Copyright infringement is a serious issue across the world. We've all seen stories from artists who have had their work stolen and prints and stickers sold of it, and other companies making thousands of dollars off of work that they did not produce. That is stealing, plain and simple. When we burn copyrighted images, that's stealing as well. Now there is a gray area here. If you are burning it as practice for yourself or as a gift for a friend or family member, is it right? No, it's still copyright infringement, but you're probably not gonna get sued. I say probably not, but it may still happen. I burned this wand display for my brother. All the images and names come from Harry Potter. I did not have permission to make this. I rationalize it because my brother is using it to hold officially licensed merchandise that he has purchased. Does that make it right? Nope, but I can live with that. Hopefully Warner Brothers doesn't feel differently. But every time you do burn something that is copyrighted, you run that risk. Doing it for yourself or as a gift is one thing, but selling it is just an outright crime. Also, it makes you an ass. So where can we find photos and not be an ass? I'm going to share a few of the methods I've used, starting with cheapest to most expensive. The cheapest on the list is royalty-free stock sites. These are sites that have photos with a free use license. You can use them for any purpose. You can usually find them in high resolution and they're completely free. Most of them you don't even have to sign up for. The next option is to take them yourselves. This is free if you have a camera on your phone. There are many YouTube videos on phone photography where you can learn some quick tips free. There's also free photo editing software out there that is very effective for newbies especially. I do say that this is free, but I want you to use caution. This may lead to spending way too much on a camera, camera accessories, and photo editing software. You've been warned. Next, and this is where we start getting out of free, 
is photo licensing sites. These sites work with the copyright holders to issue licenses based on a fee. This can range from a couple dollars to thousands of dollars. One of my favorites is canstockphoto.com. These burnings are all based on source photos where I purchased a license at this website. You can get low resolution for as little as $3.50, larger ones up around 13. But let's say there's that big famous music star and somebody wants you to do a burning. Then you have sites like Getty Images. A lot of the paparazzi out there sell photos to sites like this. These sites will pay a lot of money for celebrities. They then turn around and license those photos to anybody who wants to use them as long as they have the cash. Yes, this can be expensive, but it's an option. This next option will range from free to, I don't know, it could go up as high as you want. There are millions of photographers and artists on social media. Most of them are struggling to be seen, just like a lot of us are. If you see a photo that you think would make a wonderful burning, why don't you reach out to them on their social media and ask about licensing? I saw a great photo from one of my Instagram followers. When I saw it, I knew it would work perfect for this paper pyrography project I was working on. I asked her if I could use it for a burn and offered either cash for licensing fees or a donation to her favorite charity. She gladly gave me permission as long as she got a photo credit. And thank you, Kathleen, for letting me use it for this burning. The last option I'm gonna talk about is the most expensive. This is copyright infringement. If you're a small shop, it's probably not likely that Disney is going to sue you, but it could definitely happen. Let's say that you're a huge Marvels fan and the Avengers are your absolute favorite. You decide to do a series of burns of each of the Avengers. You decide to go all out and make them very large and sell them for about $1,000 a piece. You're just selling them like crazy and people are loving them. But then you get a cease and desist letter from the mouse. Don't think it could happen? I found this article from InsideTheMagic.net. It explains how Disney successfully sued and won the lawsuit against a local Florida small business. And this was over copyright infringement. So these people had a small business. They decided to use some images that weren't theirs, but they were still producing the materials. Their lives are now ruined. Their shop shut down. They have to give their stuff to Disney. And even though it doesn't mention it, they may have fines and penalties. It's just not worth it. Please remember, when choosing photos, don't be asked, just be friends. I hope this helped you out today, and if it did, please like and subscribe. This is our fifth video on this channel, and we'll be releasing another one every week. You can check out my work on Instagram, at Dirk the Pyrographer, or also on my website, shoemakerpyro.com. Thanks for watching, and happy burning!